No, they're right here. But they were already out exploring the little area. Exactly, right? Hey folks, so I've got Grace Ames here from Colonial Gardens. They're a regenerative farm and plant center up in uh, Blue Springs, Missouri, up in Kansas City. I'll let her talk and explain that. We just dropped off eight gilt feeders for her. Um, we don't normally do gilt feeders, so I know several of you that do watch a bunch of us or talk to us quite a bit know that that's not something we do, especially in the spring. But uh, Gilt Grace is somebody we have worked with to sell gilts to to help us pull off some of that surplus number of gilts that we have to deal with every year. Um, and then those of us, those of you that have bought picks from us, you know that we make people sign a contract, so she signed one agreeing not to breed them. They don't want to deal with that hassle of breeding anyway, so that works out great for both of us. She gets piglets a lot cheaper, and I don't have to deal with somebody else trying to breed our pigs that are quite our standard. Yeah. Right. Yes, it did, it's still filming. We saved it, don't worry. Okay, we're back from that terrifying experience, which I'll probably leave in because it's hilarious. I'm gonna let Grace introduce herself, talk a little bit about what she does, and then we'll do a quick farm walk. So, um, my role uh, when I started here was Director of Agritourism, uh, kind of stepping into more business development now, but that still doesn't take me away from the farm. Um, here at Colonial, we are part of a larger company, DCA Outdoors. Our main focus is um, nursery production, uh, landscape ready trees. Um, we actually have the largest production of landscape ready trees in North America. Um, that's part of our brand and a big focus of our brand, but here at Colonial, this is where we bring it to life for the public. Um, so the main part of our business is garden center focused. We have a beautiful nursery with top uh, rated trees. We've got perennials, um, annuals that we grow in-house, garden center, everything that you could imagine. Um, what the other piece of the puzzle is, though, is bringing um, people to the outdoors. And so we do that in many ways. That's ecotourism, agritourism. Uh, we have livestock that we do pastured rotational grazing. We have, um, and so we, you can come visit livestock feedings, etc. farm tours. Um, we've got you pick berries, you pick apples and peaches. And we have a market garden that provides food for our market um, and eventually our restaurant when we reopen that. Um, it also provides food for our events. And so that's a Four Seasons farm, and we just want to connect people with food um, and where it comes from, but not just that, but how it can be done in a better way. All righty. So we've known Grace for several years, um, and we were super, super excited to be able to take you guys out here and show you off all that they do, because she kind of gave you a quick, quick description there versus what she did a minute ago before the <laughs> phone fell. Um, so yeah, they really do focus on an insane amount of regenerative practices here and bringing the public into understanding how that can work on a farm and be profitable, which farms have to be profitable or they're not going to be around from year to year. So we're going to go ahead and walk around and then later we'll hit up and check out all their plants because they have a ton of awesome plants like she was talking about. And this is a good piece of the story. So we've struggled actually right through here uh, with Like currently, there's a bunch of nut sedge growing, mm -hmm. which will take over in those conditions. It will take over. Not, those conditions. not as much fun, but it does a great job for if you're trying to resolve that. So, a lot of um, our things that we had seeded in have washed down, so we just got new straw matting and jute, and then we'll put the plugs in as well. So, it's a lesson. Yep, yep, yep. And nut sedge does work. It's not something you want in most landscape really stuff, want. but it works. It definitely does a good job. We do have people who come down here, so our um, pasture might not be set up to be exactly what uh, the animals need. It is in large part, but we keep a large area of it pretty wide open and not in paddocks um, so that we can have large tours out here. I've had groups as large as 220 kids out at one time. Um, we love those. 
so I just need a lot of people space. Um, now she did just say that, but what you guys missed kind of, or maybe were able to see as we're walking by is there was a paddock there. That's broke into another paddock. That's broke into another paddock. And I see at least six, so seven paddocks broke down through there. We have 18 total. Um, yeah. So nine on each side. Drastically better than most farms I've been to have. So yes, yeah. absolutely. You're saying you don't have so, it, but you definitely have it. We this definitely is awesome. break it apart. Um, and we do it a little different than a lot of people who do rotational grazing. Uh, so we don't have mobile fence. We have it set up so that there is permanent hot wire um, that we can change. Like these guys aren't hot because there's no animal in right now. Um, but we just change where the wire is hot. Um, our perimeter is always hot because we do have a lot of fox and a lot of coyote that come through here. And we just want to keep the animal as safe as possible. Um, so yeah, we do have it broken down and we just move our gates um, rather than moving an entire fence. It is a thousand times easier. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. That's the issue we struggle with on our farm. Oh, okay, I'll flip that. That's an issue we struggle with on our farm. And you guys have seen from our walks that we have the woven wire with the electric offset. Um, I actually just had a problem when I was at the expo this weekend where Claire called me and let me know that the feeder pigs were in the wrong paddock. When I don't do a good enough job weed eating and keeping the grass off, the fence obviously is not as hot as it can be and pigs will test fence. So they squirted right underneath that woven wire through some low spots. With this system, it looks great. They're able to go through and maintain it. I saw it pulled up because it's on, see if maybe we can zoom in on that. They're on springs. So that looks like that's keeping a nice tension the entire time. But you can see that one there slid up. So um, do you guys move it out to help keep it out of the no, pressure? Uh, or? This one actually has slid up because of the sheep being there before we, uh, I don't know if we didn't feed it or we just didn't have enough power going through and the sheep didn't care. So they would bug up the wire. Yep. Um, so we had to bring more hand power. Awesome. So, um, Which is a nice bonus to having this woven wire as your perimeter. Yes. And you're Absolutely. guaranteed that if you have a problem, they just go from one paddock to the next. Yep. Messes up your rotation a smidge, but you don't have animals on the road <laughs> or <laughs> in your orchard where you don't but, want. You know, yeah. uh, for the most part, they stay where they're supposed to these days. So. Awesome. Um, do you want to talk about yeah, the Yeah, let's go here. Okay, so with our chickens, we have all layer hens right now. Um, we have the tractor for them to lay in and then these two makeshift mobile coops. Uh, the coops are on the skids. two to three days okay. um you know it could be a little far more frequent um but right now that's just what we're doing um so we actually well in which direction did it come so from so we're going north to south at the moment um, so we'll, we're heading this way that looks fun she said it could be more frequent but that looks I mean, fantastic looks, there's one spot up there that's i can see one way way up there yeah but it's there's still grass there most people that do chickens like this, they're like, oh, I moved it. Well, and it's bare, bare dirt. Bear. So yeah, this is this is awesome. Um, and so we'll, yeah, we'll do that. We, we do feeders out here. The feeders move every day. Um, Those are really neat looking feeders. They look like just PVC pipe that they have yep. bolted down to wood. Very effective. Awesome. Um, so once we get to the end, then we will actually work up the other side. Awesome, so. awesome. So then the chickens still have access to the entire section, which is a big section. This has got to be 10 plus acres at least, mm -hmm. right? Through this strip in the middle. But their house where they're concentrating their manure is in one individual spot at a time. Yep. And so they'll follow us. Uh, like I said, we get kids down here and so yep. they get really excited to see kids yep. or follow a bucket. But especially because these are shaded areas, this is where they yep. concentrate. Yep. So. Um, and we've got, I think we've got about 40 chickens right now, okay. uh, but we like to keep 80 to 100. Um, so there are um, chicks in the barn um, that will come out soon. And then we've got a, another farmer that has some um, hatching for us now. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Keeping that That's so cool. Yeah. And I really like, this is the same style of wire we use for our tree cages, that remesh. Do you do... Okay, so those aren't, yeah. So we cut ours. Um, I don't know, maybe we can show that. We cut the bottom ring here off so that we can stab that in okay. and saves us some stakes. I was like, part of our beauty is like, we just own a company that um, provides fiberglass stakes. So it's not the world for yeah. us, right? No, we, that's super cheap for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, we already have Yeah, T-posts are expensive, so. <laughs> yeah, so that, if I didn't have access to Yeah, you got a thousand stakes. fiberglass stakes. 
it's no big deal. Then you get a slightly taller tree cage, which yeah. is nice. That height is definitely beneficial. And so these are some of our, what we would call scrap trees or trash trees that are not good enough for a landscape. Uh, since I've been here, I've learned a lot more about trees. Uh, these are perfectly fine trees, just not landscape ready. Um, so we don't have like a full on civil pasture, but we do want to provide uh, shade and food. So these are all fruit and nut trees. This is pretty decent. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, again, she's just being really, really nice. Um, or really humble, I guess, because that's not bad if this is, I mean, if she was going for full out orchard planting, not as crazy as that, which hopefully she'll walk us up there. Those orchards are awesome looking. Um, but this is still drastically better than uh, most people's pastures. This one right over here, there's three trees in each section and those probably can't be more than a 10th of an acre sections. So, They'll still have tons of grass, tons of trees, yep. and they're all fruit and nut trees, she said. So, yeah, this is awesome. Um, along the perimeter fence on our east side, uh, you can see that there's elderberry growing along there. Yeah, I saw some flower over there, yep. right over there. Yeah, job I plug. Don't. If you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, if you like Regen Ag and have experience with driving tractors and animals, I'm your girl. <laughs> this place is so cool. We've, we've, this is our second time selling pigs to them. Like I said, we've known Grace for years. Um, we actually love it up here. If it wasn't two and a half hours away, I would be working here as my town job. So, <laughs> definite plug. If you were anywhere near Kansas City, Missouri, you should check it out and apply. and they will just go across the way um, and they'll start moving south to north. Um, one of the really cool features, speaking of water, at every other paddock juncture, we have a hydrant. Um, that one's right there. So this hydrant here uh, will feed water into um, two paddocks, right? Just with yeah. those. So every, every other juncture we've got a hydrant That is awesome. There. To not have to worry about dragging out or draining thousand plus foot hose <laughs> in the winter and then dealing with it in the summer, throwing it back and forth, goats chewing on it, playing yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah, so no, that's have a short awesome... hose. The biggest thing though is when we move, uh, just dumping a trough. Yep. But it's not that big of a deal. So um so these guys have been sitting here a little too long. That grass under the shade is worn out. Yeah, that spot is, but the rest of it still looks good. The rest of it good. looks great. Yeah, they're not over great. Like, by no means is any of this over great. So that spot will take a little bit, but that's the way shade structures work. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So um, when the pigs are just a couple weeks older, they will come out when they're trained to the hot wire, they'll come out and they would just follow behind the cows and the sheep. Awesome. Um, awesome. And then as I get more hands-on staff, I will put probably, I don't know if I'm going to do chickens because I can't contain them in these paddocks as, as easy. Yeah. I might do ducks, um, but we'll get some sort of bird behind the pigs. Awesome. So. Which will super, super help with any fly issues and yeah. other bugs, parasites, things like that, which the, while, I'm going to flip that around real quick. Hopefully you guys catch my face. I'm getting a little bit of practice with this. Um, so with feeder pigs and like with hers, so we, it's 90, 98 out right now. Um, really regretting wearing that black shirt. Um, not regretting that I'm supporting 
Colleen over at um, that little farm. I think I just said your farm name wrong. I'm sorry, I'll look that up later and add that in post. Uh, <laughs> but anywho, so we didn't worm them before delivering them um, because we didn't want them to have upset stomachs and have to ride two and a half hours in a hot vehicle in 98 degrees. So we wormed them when they got here um, and that's they're in that little stall. So any residual wormer they'll have, they'll kick out in that little stall space and not out on their awesome pastures here. Um, same thing we do at home. That's why they, one of the reasons they go in that little uh, piglet yard that you guys are going to watch the video probably before this one comes out of, um, cause we were working on that this morning. Um, so we can work that out, but then they won't get wormed again the rest of their lives. They'll be nine to 11 months old, just depending 10 months is a good average, um, but they won't need wormed again. So there's no need to worry about that out of here, but that does mean they might carry a mild parasite load if there's anything to pick up. They haven't had pigs on here since the last batch we took them, which went in in fall. So eight, 10 months ago, probably. Right. Yeah, so massive long rest time. Uh, Ascarsis or roundworms will last for years in the soil, but that's, there's been a long time and they do um, multi-species grazing on that, which means any of those Ascarsis larvae eggs, cysts, whatever, they were up on the grass and could have reinfected, passed through the cows or chickens first, which is why they'll follow with the chickens afterwards and leave with the cows. They're not compatible in that host, so they'll wake up and die in the gut. So being able to run those chickens behind is going to be an awesome, awesome benefit. Blackberries, yeah, no problem. This looks very, very similar to what, um, do you follow Farmer Dre on uh, YouTube at all? He's a uh, gardener's orchard just up north of town, Springfield. Um, yeah, follow absolutely follow him. He just put in a system that looks very, very similar to this uh, two years back, and he's been posting some updates on it. Okay. I got to see him when he planted them. And yeah, this so, looks, so this seeing this several years later of what it- So yeah, this, these were planted in 2018. Uh, 2018? 2020 was our first view pick um, and really viable crop out here. Okay. Um, so wow, then, so two years later? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I mean, again- How old were the trees when they went in? I don't, I honestly don't know. Um, probably three years old. Three years old? Is what okay. I'm going to guess. Um, and then, of course, fall last year was even more prevalent. Um, so this year, as I'm out here and I'm looking at the amount of fruit that we have on the trees. Yeah, some of these are loaded. so much healthier and yeah. more loaded than they did before. Um, and this isn't even one of the more loaded ones. Yeah, like look at that's covered right there. I mean, so that's probably actually, 20 apples. <laughs> I just sent, um, I bet. A high school FFA kid who works for me, right? I do internships with the school district, um, both for our farm and our hospitality team. So one of those kids stayed on mm -hmm. and he came through and pulled out some of the apples because they'll grow so close together. Yep, then we yep. have uh, more pest problems. So he came through and pulled out a lot of the, you know, crowded out apples. Um, so what's really fun about this um, system, these are high density planted trees. Um, we, trim them in the fall after fruiting um, or any time between fall and February, right? Just before the new growth comes on. Um, we top them just above the highest wire here so that we're never bringing ladders out. Um, you guys would be surprised by how much insurance hates ladders. Right. Um, yep, it's ridiculous. Yep. Um, but then we just, you know, keep the shape of the tree, thin it out so that we don't have any branches growing in towards center. Um, all of these things help just with overall health of the tree. Uh, we still battle fire blight and apple cedar rust, etc. Mm -hmm. So we have yep. to pull trees occasionally and replant those. Um, the uh, irrigation line that you see running across the bottom wire here, um, that actually comes from a pond that we have across the street. Cool. Um, and I posted on my personal Facebook page recently um, a video of the rain in front of the store. Going yeah, I saw that. That was soil. amazing. I'll definitely yeah. have to hit the bioswale and then yeah, probably link we'll have to, to that or something. That. Yeah. So that bioswale then filters and is piped into the pond. That pond uh, we used to irrigate our perennials, our nursery, and here. Um, that's awesome the using non potable water to be able to irrigate. Like, yeah, that's it's awesome. I love fantastic. that. Fantastic. Yeah. And so then we actually have, um, we worked on building out more swales. Um, and there is a basin back here that we have not capped off yet. Um, so when we're done with a little more of the development and planting, 
we'll cap that guy off and we'll have a pump on that one because it is downhill from here. Mm -hmm. So backup irrigation. Awesome. That awesome. Yeah. That is so neat. Yeah. Which that you can see, this is what she was talking about with the apple cedar rust. Um, and that's only on apples. The fire blight she was talking about would be pears, which... I don't have pears. We actually do have fire blight You're on apples. You're having fire blight on apples? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, man. I'm um, learning stuff. I do struggle with peach leaf curl on peaches. Okay, okay. Um, and then we do have a few rows of apricots that have not produced. And so this is one of those unfortunate things where we're like, okay, we haven't seen any return on this crop. So yeah. now we pull it out and we replant. Whether we add more apples, we add pears. Yeah. Whatever it is, you know. The peaches were at that same point, but this year we actually are getting peaches. So when do you move the? Uh, so I'm noticing fire. Uh, the fiberglass stakes on these young apples, um, or oh, these are. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. they're apples. Um, so when do you remove those? Because your bigger ones don't have any. Yeah. So these guys are just younger and needed a little more support. Um, it is so windy up here. I know you guys get wind. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. too, but. Well, especially north of town where we don't have the trees yet that we wish we right. did so yeah um and even here it's just windier gusts than that so these guys are into support um because they're all on dwarfing rootstock so they okay. don't have that massive yep. which root to hold them up. i wonder if i can i saw one of them that was yeah, like very obvious yeah so oh that one's great right over here so see how that's swelling up a bunch like that but the tree is still not that's your graft union um, and if I can see that on one of those bigger trees, you'll notice on the dwarfing rootstock ones, it's trying to hold back a mature tree, which is what these are, right? They're coming from trees that are standard size trees. They're grafted onto dwarfing rootstock, which is smaller. So the roots are limiting uptake of nutrients to the tree or sugars and things like that. Uh, well, sugars come from the leaves, but limiting that growth. And so the rootstock will actually be just a little smaller than the rest of the tree as it gets bigger on the dwarfing stock. So Ooh. I have six rows at the north That's end of the awesome. orchard. Um, those guys are like the urban apple, right? It's made, yeah. it's a tree bred to be in a small space. Um, so you can see how close these guys are planted. Um, the urban apples or the columnars are much closer than this, um, but they still have high yield. And there are three uh, different cultivars in that. that we have. Those so, are cool. Yeah, yeah they're well, super awesome. Yeah, if we can swing by, we'll try to go look at those because those columnar apples are neat. Oh, and then just a quick happiness to my favorite type of apple. Arkansas blacks are the tastiest. Oh, I love them so much. <laughs> um, some of the things that we're doing out here, again, everything happens in stages. Uh, you'll notice that we do actually um, maintain a weed-free space. In, in row, the base. yeah. Yep, in row. Um, but at the end where the anchor wires are, uh, we've got gravel, but we will also be planting out wildflower through the center. Okay, cool. Um, one of the more visual things we will be doing is putting um, kind of at the north end at our entrance. We're in process of building a huge stone wall and iron gate. Oh, that'll look um, awesome. And then, so there will be three across the front, um, one on each road entrance and then one in the center. So awesome. it'll be a really great photo That's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Um, Which is super important since you guys are aiming to bring tourists out yeah, to come onto the farm and see what you're doing. like. Um, so again, we're walking, we just passed our apricot trees, um, and we're getting into peaches. Okay. Um, so you'll notice this is our first year with actual production of peaches, and the trees are loaded. So yeah, yeah, they so are. There's, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Good, all these peaches on the ground here, yeah. And then same working up both sides. Yeah, that is, wow. <laughs> Row on the apples for pollination. Okay. Um, just having those there. So, what is winter banana? It's just a different apple type. We don't really okay. want to I mean, right. eat them. It's just nobody wants that. And it's okay, but it produces a lot of pollen. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is really fun. What we're looking at um, now on the plastic, um, plastic mulch culture. Um, in this space, for the past two years, we have done maybe three years. A pumpkin patch. Um, it works great, um, but we like to keep things different and new and again rotate what we plant in different spaces. So this is our first year with a cut flower garden. Oh awesome. Um, these we started earlier in the year at our tree farm, Schwoop Tree Farm, um, just undercover, not a heated greenhouse. Um, so we got just a little head start on them and then they were planted as plugs. Um, so we came out 
uh, it was probably three or four weeks ago. Um, so under the plastic, you have your drip tape and stretched the rows. Um, and then this will help weed control. These guys will soon get a net to help them. Um, and then we will do cut by the stem out here. And again, that's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, so, that's going to look so great. Um, the field just behind, we're getting ready to plant out in this before um it's been a couple years since we've had a sun hemp maze but we'll COVID. yeah yep. um we'll get a drone out here we'll make a plan and then we'll just start that's going. awesome yeah. um, and i might throw a few sunflowers in just for you know, oh that'll months. be beautiful yeah yeah um so in sorry i'm adhd and i don't pretend to hide it so <laughs> Blackberries. Oh, I really like the drop downs to make it easier to harvest. Uh, yeah, so this is rotational cross arm trellising. Um, so these guys actually just stood up a week and a half ago. Um, so once they're done fruiting, um, we'll go through, um, kind of trim back any of the older growth. Um, we use tree rubbers to trellis these guys on. Uh, it's a super quick way to do it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, and again, because we supply those. Yeah, it's super cheap and hand. easy to do. Yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> um, buying by the so this millions. System, <laughs> yes, this system works great. Um, and what we do is we do a leader cane um, horizontal. This uh, wire does not move. So this leader cane, we trellis to that. And so rather than this guy just producing fruit, it shoots up new canes. Um, so we do, I think, four foot centers out here. Um, and okay. we'll get a lot heavier fruit production yeah. off of a single plant. Um, these are all thornless. I've got three varieties out of here. Um, they're all from, I believe it's Dr. Clark out of University of Arkansas. Okay. Um, so you can see that the berries are going to be huge. Yeah, right? these are, well, I mean, so the ones you just and pointed to, one. they're big, but some of these are like, that is a big blackberry. Huge berry. I think the only blackberries, and I'm not real versed in blackberries, um, mm -hmm. but the only ones I've ever seen close to that are the like triple crowns. Yeah, which so, are huge and delicious. Um, I'm not going to remember all of the three varieties we have. It's Wichita, Don't expect you to. Don't Osage, worry. and Natchez, I think. Oh, this is a... There you go. You can see what she was talking about there. Really, yeah. Bell, on this, that vine that comes across. So they folded it over. So kind of like when you um, lay a hedgerow, you'll lay over that pleacher, so, and then new branches grow up, and they can I'll train those. Kind of, uh, this guy has pens in it, right? So you would um, pull the pen, um, lay this whole arm down, at okay. winter time um so then when new new growth happens it all happens you know phototropism yeah. everything's growing towards the sun um so all of the flowers um and then once we see the fruit set uh, -huh. uh this is when we stand it up so there's still a few flowers but for the most part the fruit is set um and we have lifted now so not only is it um all fruit on one side so you can see walking down this row i'd pick on this side and yeah on pick this. on that side yeah um the fruit ends up being a little bit shaded um so, less so no sunburn. sunburn, yeah. Um, and then the other added bonus, I mean, we still get birds out here, but they don't see the fruit quite yeah, as easily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's when they're just nice. flying over, they just see all yeah. the leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That is awesome. So super great yeah. system. And again, these guys, it's, uh, we actually have a landscape cabin. Um, there's irrigation running under there. We never use it anymore. Really? Um, but it was an established That's awesome. Piece, so. That's awesome. I love when you can turn a crop into a dry land crop. And then, I didn't mention this in the apples, but we set everything up, or we try to at least, um, so that, you know, our, our entry point is on the north side of the farm. Every uh, cultivar that we plant, um, so like in the blackberries, you know, we have some that ripen last week of June, first week of July, kind of weather dependent. Um, but then the, the next one's kind of, the last one to ripen is at the south, and that's the same with our apples. Nice, nice. So, so then we when can you just have... send people like down the yeah. field instead of spotting. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. Which for being a you pick type situation or even just crews coming into pick has yep. to be insanely convenient. So convenient. We know we can say, you know, these rows, this is where you drop the G. Versus drive 50 feet down, skip the first 30 plants, and then it's this one row, and uh -huh. then skip five more rows, and then go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes that, that's it's really great. nice. Master planning is beautiful. <laughs> I don't know how much 
um, we will be able to maintain that. So I do have down here several rows of trellis that haven't been planted out. Okay. Uh, there's another variety that I would love to get. They're super sweet, super hardy. Again, came out of University of Arkansas. I don't know when they ripen in comparison to everybody else. So like, it okay. might not be a perfect system. Yeah. But um, there's at least 90% of it is, yeah. and that'd be nice. Yeah. Which is great. There's at least some thought put into the process, even if it doesn't always work out. And sometimes, you know, we always are flexible too. So when I started, we had um, goji berries and aronia berries out here. Oh, I remember, we, they were over here, they were, yeah? They were actually here. They were here? Okay. Um, but we have had such a bad deer issue. Um, so sometimes I'll come and walk down here. Uh -huh. And I was walking out here one night, full moon, and I walked up to uh, like 15 deer and they didn't even move. That's how dedicated she is to her job and how great working here would be, is that you would want to be here in the middle of the night it's just at so a pretty. full moon. Um, so apply for that job. So pretty. Um, so anyways, we have such a deer issue. We took those guys out because we weren't getting a big return on the fruit. Nobody wanted it. Um, and I haven't grown the food side of the business to uh, process that yet. Um, so we just planted blueberries. Some went in, in the fall, some in the spring. Okay. So. Do you think you'll do something similar to what you have on the blackberries or a different system? Uh, I think we'll keep it similar to what it is, just a little better okay. done. That RCA trellis is so expensive. And I do yeah. have a little bit more, but not a ton more yeah. Yeah. Um, that I could use. So. Hire yourself a welder. Uh, there is one on site. I think that's what, uh, and I could be horribly wrong, and Dre, if there's any chance you watch this and tell me that I'm wrong, feel free to do so. but. I think he welded all the RCS trellis for their blackberries that they put in. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I don't know. Dre, yeah, maybe you I need think... to make some and send them up here. <laughs> I've seen a lot of farmers do different things to, to do a makeshift, which is awesome. Um, I love that mindset. All right, pumpkins are going out here. Um, so these guys are soon to be transplanted. We've got them growing up in Bertha, our greenhouse. Okay. Um, we had Wonderful a... name. Yeah. Big Bertha. She's bigger than all the other greenhouses. <laughs> um, we had a spring festival for kids, a planting festival. So our playground is open, all the things, and the thing that the kids got to do was plant a pumpkin. And then cool. we're, it's in our pumpkin nursery, right? So they'll be able to come find their pumpkin this fall. Oh, so like they're gonna have the tags the on tag, the pumpkin? Yeah, their name tag that's is gonna amazing. be That's amazing, so. oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah. So this is kind of conclusion of what's planted out now. Um, cover crops down at the end, uh, you can kind of see behind this mulch pile Looks here. Like Maybe. I think we did rye down there. I am trying to remember. 
this far back, We've no way I can tell the difference. So. Um, okay, well that's best with a covered crop anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we like to throw radish and turnip in our covered crops. We even use covered crops at the tree farms. Okay. Um, so daikon radish go in before a new planting. Yeah, daikon are great for loosening up that topsoil. Yes, top they so. are. Yeah. Right? We have a lot of clay. not like <laughs> they're not still happy and <laughs> enjoying life over there. There's plenty of else you're doing with nice wildlife. I think we still have a lot to see, um, so I'm not going to have us walk all the way down there, but yeah, that is a huge swale to catch all of this. Uh, you guys can really tell the video that the angle's up. We've been steadily walking downhill this entire time, so that is everything from this half yep, it would it run off. It absolutely is. And there is actually, you can see that uh, you can see the swale not planted out yet. But again, I was telling you guys in the pasture that we are doing plugs and seeds uh, with a straw mat to repopulate that with wildflowers. So uh, awesome. Pollinators are such a huge piece of this that we're attracting them as much as we can. Yeah. That's why we have, you know, tons of clover. In yeah, there is a lot of it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, we're going to walk back up to the top and we'll catch you guys again when we get up there. All right, so um, these production houses, these smaller greenhouses that we have in the parking lot, so this is where we grow color. So annual production and uh, we start some of our own vegetable plants that we sell here. These guys are full, like crazy full. We'll have hanging combo baskets in the spring. It's like from January through um, the end of May, these guys are full of color. Um, we are a little behind on sales just because of a wet, cold spring this year, so we have a little bit of color left. But typically after Memorial Day, um, these guys get cleaned out and uh, reused um, for raspberries. So this system, um, we do kind of a makeshift trellis. Uh, we run fertigation through, through here. Um, but this bag is a woven polypropylene bag. Um, we use this for our tree production. I'm not going to talk about that because I'm not the best tree expert on that, um, but there are plenty of videos of um, my boss, Tori Schwoke, talking about that on his page. Um, it's amazing what it does for the root system, but this makes raspberries mobile for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we have these guys, they were actually pretty tall um, and leafed out, but we decided to go ahead and cut back because they are uh, fall crops, so they're going to rebound just fine. You guys already see they're make, doing great there. Yeah. yeah. And it will make trellising so much easier. Um, we have a few in here that look like they might not make it, but we'll wait and see. Yep. Um, this extends season for us as well. So I think I picked my last ripe raspberry last year in the second week of December, <laughs> um, which I love, That's right? Awesome. We can roll the sides down, yeah. uh, throw the heat on, but it doesn't have to be super hot. Just about freezing. Yeah. And so what I love about this is we can start picking berries and it's hot like it is today. Yeah, and the berries are hot. good, but as soon as we hit that first frost date, because I won't roll my sides down at that point. It gets just cold enough that the taste in the berries yeah. overnight it goes to like the sweetest yeah. raspberry well, you've like ever had. Carrots, when they finally get a frost, yeah. are just it's oh, just a thousand times better. People don't understand, better. right? Yeah, like yeah. cold weather does something yep. yeah. um, for your crop. So that's what happens in these uh, uh, greenhouses here. Uh, but I'll show you kind of Big Bertha. Um, Close up. I definitely didn't want to interrupt her on that. I will do my best to track down and link hopefully she'll just send them to me make my life a little easier um i bet she will yeah. to uh to her boss's talks on those bags um but a quick little a little bit i know on them is they're essentially air prune bags yeah. so what that does is instead of letting you know in your traditional hard plastic pots the roots will go out hit the pot circle around the pot and they don't tend to do as well in uh transplanting situations 
as you can often get them to die or they'll J root or do a bunch of funny weird things. Air pruning, those roots hit the sides. The air causes the tip to die. When the tip dies, then it roots out from the sides of those tips, creating a bunch of little fibrous roots. And those fibrous roots hold into the ground a thousand times better. And this is a beautiful greenhouse. I'll just link it to him. He'll talk better. with this greenhouse but we do have um, some really cool things happening here um, we have tomatoes these guys have been growing since fall um, we have some that were growing since um, wait since fall yeah so you and kept so them all winter all growing winter, under here that's awesome um, we actually have some that were planted last july um, that's amazing that are farther up here so we were doing kind of the classic tomahawk situation yep, yep. Um, but we just switched over this week to this guy um, a lot of my people that work out here are short, um, and Fair. this one is easier. Um, the hanging wire is lower. The other one, they were having uh -huh. to climb up on step stools. That's fair. Um, so this just allows. So it's still the, the same lean clip, drop. Same lean drop, lean drop. It's just a much easier system to do. Okay. Um, and it makes cleaning it up. Um, well, yeah, because now you don't have easier, all this right? string, right? I don't that's... have all the string, and I don't have to go through and pull off so many clips. I what... just have these two things that every time I lean in lower. Yeah, you just slide um, that, I just slide up, that up. Yeah. Because that's my biggest complaint. I love this system for tomatoes, but there's so much waste. You can't just pull it, throw it all in the compost bin because it's you've got a bunch string, of nylon right? string. There's, you yeah. But now switching to this, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so there's no waste because you just have, and these are spongy, so like they're not, the stem can still grow and it's not going to yep. squish it. So that's awesome. I love that. Um, and again, we utilize the uh, plant red package to grow bag in multiple scenarios. That having those handles on there to be able to move those is oh, yeah, that's just going to be amazing. And we have these from like a seven gallon up to a fifty gallon. Like nobody's Dang. picking up that fifty gallon. No, no, no. But then you can hook it with a tractor and you can go. Hook it with yeah. a tractor, absolutely. Um, so this table that we just walked by, these are the pumpkins that are ready for the field. Um, we're always trying to start something to have it ready to go, um, and we do a pretty decent amount of micro I was going to say, that's a lot of micros. Um, so we have a couple of restaurants on board that buy bulk micro greens from us, which okay. is awesome. Yeah. And we sell a lot just out of our own market. They're so easy. Um, it's a two-week turnaround, basically, from plant yeah. to harvest. A little different depending on... Depending on know, which one it which is. Which one but it is, yeah. but it's super easy for us to do. Um, so over here is our planting table. Um, I have a bin here that soil lives in. Um, oh, you can roll in and out. Oh yeah. my God. And so then when I dust the tray, all that excess soil just goes back That's into the That's awesome. Bin. So now you don't have to sweep as much yeah. up off the floors. Absolutely. Still some, but not Still as much. Still some, yeah. yeah. Um, these are the older tomatoes. They've been out here for a while. They're still looking good. Yeah, that looks this awesome. This is Honolulu. Howdy. <laughs> Uh, walking stick kale, celery. We Those are a lot of, insane. Like, yeah. I don't think, I don't know that that's showing up. Like, I don't have small hands, okay? And I can't. I mean, like, it's taller than close. we are. For yeah, sure. like, so. these are huge. Um, There's a really, really cool moth. It's probably not good. I don't know what it is. I found a neat moth. I don't know what it is, but it's very beautiful. Wait, what was it? Some kind of moth. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Don't know if it's good, don't know if it's bad, but it's very cool looking, very pretty. Super cool looking. Watch the video later, you'll see. <laughs> Although I think we're um, gonna be almost 30 minutes in, so you're gonna have to watch a ways. I'm gonna watch ways. This is something I wish we had set up, but uh, I don't have enough power out here yet. We're working on that. Um, this is an aquaponic system. When I first came on board, it was set up in a retail greenhouse, and we actually harvested 70 tilapia out of that tank back there. Um, we had food growing in the media bed, as well as the float bed. Um, when we do get more um, power out here, my hope is to get shrimp in uh, this area down here. That would well. be awesome. Yeah. Aquaponics is such such a cool system, so that'll so, be neat. Um, out here, this is our pack shed. We recently had a mural. Um, yeah, I'm so glad to see that in person. I had to see that on Facebook, and that looks so neat. Um, this was a local artist, wasn't it? Yeah, local story to him and he happens to be at a yeah. point in his life where he cares more about these things um so he was awesome. so excited to do this um on the ends there are different things like there's a bee on one end a vegetable harvest and then a carbon on the um, actual compost bin um the top up here looks like a green like roof up there some weeding, but there are actually sweet potatoes growing and that's why oh, that's awesome so they can 
vine out over this outdoor classroom space. Um, again, pollinators, um, etc. Yeah, it looks like, uh, oh, I'm thinking blue indigo? I can't remember, honestly. Oh, there's tags. There's tags, we can find out. Uh, blueberry Sunday, blue, decadence, blueberry Sunday. Full sun. Baptista, perennial. Now I'm just super distracted, sorry people. Yeah, there we go, vibrant blue indigo spires. Yeah. Okay, not crazy. Wow. Right, uh, so, so she said earlier that her market garden wasn't doing that great, but this looks better than any market garden I ever succeeded at doing. So like, <laughs> Standards, ouch. Right? We're crazy, I'm ouch. sorry, we're crazy. <laughs> um, there are a couple of things to point out here. So we're not actually growing in soil here. Um, this was a low-lying area that um, flooded fairly often. Uh, it was stagnant and swampy. So in winter of 20, December of 20, we came out, we graded it so that it all slopes towards a swale. Um, this is one of the few places on property where our water doesn't come back to us. Oh. Um, so it does filter into stormwater. Um, but we, again, natives all along the way to retain yeah. um, any of the soil that's there and, again, yeah, attract but you pollinators. Can see a ton going around there yeah. so so working on that um we did the traditional 30 inch bed um just because with market garden that's what your tools are built for um so after grading we put down a layer of cardboard and then put spent um soilless media from our tree farm so trees grew in this for three to five years before oh. it headed over here um it offers its own set of challenges and its own set of benefits um i'm not going to go into those today um but it it is different than growing in soil but it's great it's beautiful um and we have a pretty decent crop yeah so. no these look amazing some of these things are cold weather things that need to be pulled out and some of our warm weather things haven't quite hit full growth um as fast as they should have but um and then we are hopefully uh, germinating carrots under that um, piece of poly at the back. Okay. Um, so the idea is that um, because germ carrots are so hard to get to germinate evenly, uh, we'll plant water um, and then that will stay on white side up. So sometimes we do black and white. I think okay. we actually have frost go off out there now. Um, but it just reflects the heat away. The white reflects the heat away, but keeps the moisture yep. in. Yep. Um, so we are checking that frequently. Every day to be able to pull. Yep, or... multiple times a day okay. so that we don't nuke them out. Um, again, these were what we would consider scrap trees. They were gar garbage. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so we're planting those out. Uh, and then how long to mix here? So this is a dry spot. There's our ladder to get up on top of the <laughs> which happens to be growing a lot of things right now. That's usually the ghost when you don't turn it like nearly daily. Yeah, it needs to be turned way more often. I mean, but we also... man, I think you could harvest some, uh, looks um, like collards maybe in the back. Absolutely, they look super happy there. <laughs> um, but like, what's great about having the retail greenhouse when they have plants that are no longer saleable or they uh, go through and prune back, um, anything that is herbaceous and non-woody can go through. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, big scape of the front of our store. Um, so what's really cool, I talked about the pond uh, collecting rainwater. Um, kind of you can see over to the left here, all of the trees and the wild plants. Um, those are in front of the greenhouse, the swale that goes into a basin over where all of the evergreens are. That's where we collect the surface water runoff from the parking lot. Um, It's 
snack yeah, trees are beautiful. Yes, yes they are. We might get a, a drive-by for the man himself. <laughs> um, and then we oh, do I big love the bumper basket. sticker. Trees are the answer. Yes. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. So this is... Um, First off, it's AC and it feels so much better than 98 yeah, degrees. we can stop sweating for a minute. <laughs> um, so we just walked through the vestibule. We have a uh, green wall out there. Um, when you walk in immediately to the right, this is where we start to tell the food story um, yeah. for the general public. So produce, most of which we grew on site. Um, I do pull from other farmers um, that practice regenerative ag. Um, not only farmers, but vendors as well. So like we carry maple syrup, that's not local, but we found no. the closest thing um, and they practice a very mindful uh, harvesting techniques that don't interfere with birds. Um, awesome. Which you don't realize happens in no, maple yeah. syrup production, right? Um, eggs from our chickens, lots of local creameries. Um, you know, again, telling the story of not necessarily local, but as close as you can get the practice is the mm -hmm. best way possible. Uh, so all of the flour that we carry here, uh, Janie's Mill is in Akron, Illinois, I think. Nope, that's probably wrong. Ashkin, Illinois. Um, so very northern, northeastern part of Illinois. Um, but the guy who owns the farm is the same guy who delivers the flour here. It's organic practices, um, regenerative practices, and I know him personally, which is great. That's right? awesome. We still yeah. have those connections with yep. people. One of the things that we do, um, and one of the questions I get a lot here is, oh cool, you have wine, it must all be Missouri wine. Well guys, I don't know if you know, but Missouri's not the greatest at wine, so we do carry a couple of Missouri wines, uh, Jowler Creek and Fertile, because they're close. Okay. Um, but my wine reps are so good at knowing our story and what uh, I will accept. And what your standards are. Yeah, yep. and so we even have old world stuff here, like my Klang is an Austrian wine, it's grown at such a high elevation, there's no need for pesticides, etc. Awesome. Um, and they're actually, look at the label, right? It's a cow. Um, they're a farm before they're a vineyard. Um, so these are, sometimes I hear, you know, your classic Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, et cetera, mm -hmm. but sometimes we're stretching outside of that box. Um, I've got some wines from Chile that are called Noas Pitico, a really nice winemaker. Um, he produces a lot of high-end wines, but these are his like low-end, non-filtered organic wines. And awesome. literally it means uh, it's not fancy. So I do it's this with fancy. spirits as well, local um, spirits but also reach on spirits as well. Oh, I love Big Heart tea. Yeah. I'm not getting paid to do a draw for that. I just actually really, really like it's that tea. It's fantastic, and it is not the tea that most of Kansas City uses. These guys are actually out of St. Louis, but their sourcing practices really Yeah, fit yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, so I promise I'm not getting a plug for this, so I can't get in trouble or anything, but they're really, really cool. Look up their company. Super cool. Um, sweets. Nope, hold on, I'm gonna get this wrong. The coffee is super locally roasted. The guy who sources that does an amazing job of sourcing its beans. Uh, it's phenomenal. Um, chocolate, because, you know, if you're from Springfield, you know the whole yeah. Askinosi yep. story. Yeah, so. yep, Askinosi is awesome. Is um, that, where, oh yeah, down there. Askinosi chocolate is also amazing. Check their company out. So then, enough about food right now. I mean, seeds, oh, I'm tools, kind of hungry now. <laughs> Supplies, yes. right? If you want a wildlife habitat, come here. We've got bird nesting balls. We've got. Oh, um, I need to hook you up with some of our native bird houses. bee houses, which I know you make some, and I yeah. might actually love to. We it. could go into yeah. detail about those. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that we do here, we have um, insects uh, that we bring on. So this is an option for pest control. Um, we use um, also a bio inoculant. Um, so this is a liquid compost kit at last count. It's called BioLife 800 um, because at first count, that's how many living organisms. I think at last count that I heard was 1,100 wow. plus living organisms that in the mix. are going to help uh, with nutrient uptake. That's awesome. All the things. So. Um, do you want to go greenhouse or nursery? Um, shoot, you choose. Let's go nursery. Okay. Trees are our story, right? Like yeah. That's the bigger part of our business. So we'll do this. All right, so out here, this is our courtyard for events, etc. because again, we're inviting people out here. And there's that restaurant space that, fingers crossed, opens back up soon, because it it's so soon. cool. It will be soon. Um, and then I just want to like drop you into the nursery really quick. So one of the things that I told you about was the 
bag that we do the plant right package for our trees. Um, so with most of our trees, we're growing them. Um, we've got about 2,500 acres just north of here in tree production. Um, we've got tree farms in six states. Um, so we have another thousand acres in production in Oregon. Uh, that's where all of our There's evergreens are growing. a lot of trees. Yeah, it's so many trees. That is awesome. More um, trees. And then what we're not growing, we work with proven winners um, because they're bringing the best genetics, um, dwarfing things, things that uh, we don't do invasive. So there are mm -hmm. some things that might look like an invasive, but these are all sterile. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of different pieces to the puzzle out here. Yep, yep. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail because this is outside of my wheelhouse. Really. Yeah, yeah. So. And landscaping is a very, very complicated thing. But yes. yeah, yes, you guys yes. are doing awesome. So, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pull it back. So they also have um, a lot of awesome house plants over on the other side and things like that. Um, but we're actually running a little bit short on time um, and I've got to keep rolling to be able to finish things up down on our farm. So sadly, we are going to call it done. But um, thank you so much to Grace and Ames here for giving us a tour of this place. Um, and I'll try to remember to link that video for those plant right bags and anything else when I rewatch and edit this that I said I'd drop links for if I didn't drop it in the comments. Um, and as always, it really, really helps us if you like, subscribe, and comment. And of course, check out their social medias and like them too. Thanks.